have the four you want? I think it's a pretty deep room. I told the guys today, I'll be honest with you, exactly what I told them today is we got about a week and a half until we play. So I want everybody to prove to me that they, they have earned the right to go into the rotation. And if they do, I'll play them. And that's that's the truth. That's exactly what I said to me today. We've heard a lot about you guys forcing turnovers. What has been the key to your success in that? I think uh, kind of what I just went, to, went, went back to saying is they know what they're doing. Um, they're playing with good fundamentals, good technique, and then they're confident. And they're, they're finishing, and they're finishing violent. And they're not afraid to go try to make a play. That's what practice is for. That's what I tried to talk to them about in the spring, if you remember. And then it's fun to see them doing that. And if they make a mistake, we'll fix it. But I want them to, I want them to be fearless. And, and, and I want that to be their mindset. And when you do that, Hopefully good things will happen. Do you think some of those turnovers can translate into you? Do I think? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I, I really hope so. You know? I mean, I, I, when I think of turnovers, guys, to me, it's it's everybody, right? It's it's ball disruption by the D-line. It's the linebackers getting in windows. It's tip balls. And then a lot of the times, it's we end up catching them, and we get the credit for it. It's the DBs, but it's the whole defense. So the guys have been doing a good job. Jeff, now that you've seen two weeks of Jeff Okuda on the field every day. What makes him so special? I think his work ethic. I think you know he's an exceptional athlete. He's got size, length, speed. Uh, he's got great feet. He loves football and he practices hard every single day. So what separates him from you know other people is his mindset. And that's what the great ones have. And that's, that's what he does. He works. You've, you've uh, seen a lot of NFL quarterbacks before. He's projected first round pick. Do you see that already? Uh, Here's what I tell Jeff, right? It's one day at a time. Like, projections don't mean anything. He's got to go out and prove it every single day at practice, which is very important. And then he's got to go play this year, you know? And I don't want it to be a distraction because he can't think like that. He's just got to go play ball. And, I, and I'm, like I said, I'm being honest with you. That's, that's how I talk to him. Like, forget all that, man. Let's go practice today. And then let's go practice tomorrow. And then on Saturday, let's go. Go play. Have fun and be fearless. You so, fine. I'm sorry. Do you find that because of this place that there's a preoccupation that I get here, put in a little time, boom, I'm ready for that. How, how do you uh, enjoy the moment for them? How do they enjoy I, the moment? I, I try to teach them what it's like there, right? And how fun and great it is to be here right now with your teammates that you've been with at your school. And then for some, this is going to be the most fun they ever have playing football. And they need to embrace that. There's going to be plenty of other time down the road if they're fortunate enough to play in the NFL. But for now, they, this group's close. They've done an unbelievable job here. Getting the right people, gelling this thing together. There's nothing like that. You know, in the NFL, it's every time you look around, the roster is different. This is the only time in their lives where they'll have a group of people that they can really do this together with. And they have to embrace that. So the guys we got to talk to say that they're all fired up about what you brought to the do you sense that in them too that they're paying attention? I mean, how, oh yeah. How does it they're, show up? I they're they're paying attention, and, and if you've seen practice, I'm not easy on them. I mean, I get after those guys. I mean, it's a hard position to play. I want them to be great. They want to be great, and and they bought in, you know, and, and I appreciate that. And then, if you, if you were going to start a game tomorrow, who would be your and you're in your Sam look, you know, fourth or eight? Who would be the two safeties? Uh, ask me that. Ask me that next week. And I'll give you well, what I'm getting to here, where, where does Brendan White fit in for the base defense as opposed to the book? I mean, Again, I think what personnel are they in? Who do they have on the field? How athletic is the tight end? Who's the slot receiver? Who's the quarterback? There's a lot that goes into that. And, I, and I, by no means am I avoiding your question, but yeah. the guy who starts on the first play might not be in the second play. You, you know what I mean? And who do they send in? So. There's a lot that goes into that. That's why I really I really don't know yet. I don't know what they're gonna do on their first play, so I can't tell you what personnel group will be in the first play. So I think they're both starters. You know, and that's the that's the truth. But I'm not saying that's what they read it. No, that's the truth. Um, they've earned the right to do that and just like Wint has done the same thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say Sean Wade, how does how does this all figure out? For Sean Wade? Yeah. Sean plays a different position than those guys. Right, right, but he's he was in the slot on a lot of guys last year we saw. Sure. Is that still kinda of like well, a I think, you'll, I think you'll see Sean inside. I think you'll, you'll see Sean outside. Yeah. It depends who's 
who's their slot, who's more suited to cover the slot, who's more suited to cover the big receiver on the edge. So again, it's like again, I, like I promise you, I'm being completely honest with you. It's who are we playing? Who do they have? What's our best matchup? Let's put our guys in the best position to win with those matchups, and then let's go play. And then we have guys that can rotate in. You know, we got we got talent. So if you, when you name all those guys, and you talk, we're just getting there, I think with the rotating in. Josh Parker's name has come up maybe more than anybody. He had a couple of picks a few weeks ago. Right. The limited amount we get to hear about, that's a big deal. How does, where does he fit in to this plan? How much can he help this season? He's starting to be consistent, and that's the one thing. If, if, if you look at the way Josh has practiced, you guys saw Josh came out and it was like interception, interception, right? And then I think he started to press a little bit, and I told him this, and I think he was trying to make plays. Well, you just gotta let plays come to you in this game. And I think he's getting back to that. We just talked to him about being consistent. And if he's consistent, we'll, we'll find a role for him and we'll get him in. When you have that much, you have that much to work with at corner, at safety, the bullet and Sam. Is there any defense that you got? If you just decided to make up a scheme tomorrow, could you? I mean, can you do whatever? You oh want? yeah, we got him in now. Definitely, <laughs> it's all plug and play. You might see seven DBs on the field one day. The linebacker guys might not be happy, but <laughs> if they have, what if they got five wides on the field, right? Hmm. We better get some DBs on the field, you know. So. Yeah, we have those packages. How, how much fun is that for you to go to work and scheme up? Urban used to say, draw on the whiteboard, get up the ideas. When you have this much talent, you can do whatever you want. How much fun is that as a coach? I just love coaching in general. I mean, just being out here every day, it's been unbelievable. This is probably the most fun I've had coaching in a long time. And it's because of how hard they work and how hard they practice. But truthfully, it's we want our guys to play fast and we want them to know what they're doing. So sometimes, like, I'll say to one of the assistants, like, Hey, did I go over their head? Like, I don't want to do that. I want I want these guys to know what they're doing so they can line up and play. So sometimes I have to check myself too and say, whoa, slow down, right? Like today in my meeting, I looked over and said, hey, did I give them too much information? Like I'm learning too and I have to learn the guys and, but I'm having fun. Hey Jeff, I know this is a little bit different from the NFL, but you've been quite the closer on the recruiting trail. I was wondering now that we're in August, did you think when you took this job that you guys would be this this close to being finished with your class at this point in the year? I don't, I mean, like, they yeah, have, like, 90% yeah. of it all that, filled up already. To be honest with you, I had no clue what to expect when I came back recruiting. So I didn't really have much expectation. I knew I had a job to do. And then with the support people we had and recruiting for this place, I just went out and tried as, the best that I could. And, you know, hopefully some good things continue to happen. And as you've been learning on the job about – what does having this much already done in the recruiting class do for a coach? When you're in August, you have three months till December, yeah, I, and you have like three or four maybe spots left to fill. Yeah, from that aspect, it's nice, right? Because now we know exactly who who the guys are. We need to communicate with, need to stay in touch with, which families we're really. So you can really become close with those guys because you're not spread so thin. You know, I'm not reaching here and reaching here. It's kind of I got this group of guys and. Let's go, and then when that's done, let's go coach football. Does it allow you to go get luxury type guys that aren't really necessarily filling a need? You got your needs basically all addressed. Can you spend three months trying to get guys maybe in other states that you would have had a harder time to get, you know, or in other situations? Does that make sense? It does. I, I'm probably still figuring that out too. You know, okay. I'm just just doing everything as hard as I can and <clears throat> whatever they tell me to do and. Hopefully things work out well. All right, I'll get you next August on that some, stuff. Yeah. Some speculation. Yeah, give me some time to figure that out. Does having, does having a deep wide receiver room, talented wide receiver room, make your job, I guess, for lack of a better term, easier? Do you get to kind of use that? I don't. I don't know if it makes my job easier. I think iron sharpens iron, and I think Coach Hartline is one of the best receiver coaches in the whole entire world. I know he'll laugh when I say that, but I do mean that. Um, so that combination with the skill they have makes our guys better it's hard every rep is hard which is what it's going to be like in a game you know so i think that's really cool that we get to do that so there were reports about... out there that uh, jonathan cooper uh, wasn't at practice and maybe dealing with some injury issues we haven't talked to coach day obviously today just is there anything to what's going on is it a lingering thing or hoping to get him back sometime soon ask coach day about that i think mm -hmm. he'll give you the best answer i don't want to put any words in anyone's mouth so just if you don't mind, just ask Coach Dan. Okay. And again, no disrespect. He'll we'll just do a better match on that. Jeff, when you're talking about putting guys in the right position, and you want Sean Wade being able to bounce between stuff, like what, what is the best position for him? Where, where is he at his best? 
That's a good question. Um, Sean's a really smart football player, and he's really instinctive. So when he plays inside, he's he sees things well. So he's good against the run, he's good against the pass, and things move faster in there, right? And he can react quickly, mentally and physically, which is awesome. So from that aspect, I think he's a good player inside. I also think he has a side length, size, length, and speed to play on the outside too. So, you know, I, I think he's a really good combination, and I know I'm not giving you, I'm kind of riding the fence a little, but I think he's good at both, and I think he'll continue to develop it. Can you please put out a depth chart? <clears throat> what position will be next to Sean today? That is a good question. They haven't asked me that yet. It just seems like he's playing strong safety, he's playing nickel corner, he's playing outside. Like That's kind of cool that we can you guys can't figure that out. That means FAU won't figure it out either. Right? Yeah, I guess you're right. So let's see when the depth chart comes out what it is. That, that's funny though. So he could honestly, you could put nickel, you could put corner, you could put safety, because it might look like all those things, right? Sometimes you see him there, sometimes you see him there, sometimes you see him there. So kind of like all the above. Yeah. He'll probably just list him as a corner, I guess, right? How many other? Do you have any other guys like that? I don't. Like Jordan's talked about wanting to 